In this video, we look at antivirus settings used for FS Logix. In this video, we look at important antivirus settings that, if overlooked, could impact FS Logix performance and reliability. Before that, please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon. YouTube won't let you know about new content unless you click the bell. Check out my courses on AVD, Windows 365, and Intune Management, and Hybrid Identities with Windows AD and Enter ID, available at Udemy.com. The links are below. And thank you, channel members. Your support is appreciated. This is a short but important video. One often overlooked step in deploying FS Logix is configuring antivirus exclusions. This applies to Azure Virtual Desktop, as well as other virtual and physical environments where FS Logix is used. Antivirus solutions have the capabilities to detect, prevent, and respond to a variety of threats. An antivirus client does this by monitoring file access, processes, and other user and system activities. There are some files, however, that are not a threat and don't need to be monitored. Using real-time scanners on known good files could cause performance issues. FS Logix, for example, stores profile data in a VHD or a VHDX virtual hard disk file that's mounted to the session host when the user logs in. These files can be large and resource intensive to scan. Real time file scans on an FS Logix profile container could cause performance issues for end users by adding unnecessary IOPS to the file share it's mounted on. To address this, most antivirus products include an option to exclude files from real-time scanning. There are a lot of antivirus solutions and each has a different way of excluding files. Because each is different, this video won't go over how to configure exclusions, only what to configure. Check your product's documentation for details on configuring exclusions. Anyway, antivirus applications are known to interfere with FS Logix profile containers. The recommendation for FS Logix is to not scan any profile VHD or VHDX container. The first set of recommended exclusions include profile containers in the temp directory and Windows directory. The temp and Windows directory environmental variable is used in the path. Notice there's one path for the VHD file and a second for the VHDX file. We could technically use one of the two exclusions. For example, if the organization never uses a .VHDX format for profiles, it wouldn't be necessary to add that to the exclusion. However, my suggestion is to add them both anyway in case someone else uses the other profile format in the future. Next, we need to create exclusions for each file share used to store profile containers. This is a UNC path with a server name and share name. There are four, one for the VHD, one for the lock file used when the profile is in use, one for the meta extension, and one for the metadata extension. These files store metadata about the profile container. There's a second set for the VHDX extensions. This could get tedious. The exclusion requires eight entries for each FS Logix file share in the environment, four for the VHD files and four for the VHDX files. So if your organization has four different FS Logix profile shares, that would be 32 entries. Keep watching, we're not done yet. But before we go to the next set of exclusions, you may be asking yourself, why not just exclude all VHD and VHDX files? Well, that is an option, but imagine someone getting a USB drive with a VHD file on it from some unknown source, and then they plug it into a device on your network. It would probably be best to have that scanned. The goal is to limit exclusions to known good file types and locations. You may be concerned about not scanning user profile containers. These exclusions do not apply to the contents of the container. Once mounted, the contents of the profile are still scanned. So adding these exclusions will not exclude the files in the profile containers, only the containers themselves, the VHD and the VHDX files. Last is cloud cache exclusions. If an organization uses cloud cache, be sure to exclude the cache folders and files. These are in the program data, FS logic cache, and proxy directory. It is possible to move the location of these proxy and cache files to a second drive off the OS disk, for example. If that's the case, be sure to add the updated path to the exclusion. We reached the end. I hope this helps you better understand what to add to the exclusions for FS logics. 
A link to the Microsoft Learn document on configuring exclusions is in the description below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.